Happy Christmas, jewellery makers. We're here on day 11 of the advent calendar. Let's see what's in the calendar. We've got, these are fab. We have got, look at this floral goodness in a rainbow of colors they're absolutely amazing i've loved working with these flowers um, and i hope you do too so we've got two projects um we're going to be working on um a bracelet which could also i mean i had loads left over from doing the bracelet and it's and it's fairly full on so you could do like a headband um you know do a little um headband put some elastic around it you could do hair grips. You could actually, if you made it narrower, um, you could make an elastic bobbly thing as well. So um, you could do all that. And then I've made some earrings with it spiraling round, um, which again, you could make a pendant of this. Um, so we've got two lots of stuff to do. I'm gonna pop those back in there. We've got, so the bracelet, if I turn that around, is based on um, a peyote. Um, now we did peyote the other day um, this is odd count peyote because you want to get that point so when you graduate down in size um, you basically odd count will graduate down of course if you're even count you can't do the middle bit so um, yeah so we're going to do that and then the earrings are a twisted herringbone and then I've used two colors and on the pink I've spiralled round um, and put the flowers on the pink. So it's it's very exciting. I can't wait to do this. So peyote, we, we did a little bit of peyote. Um, this is, an, like I say, it's an odd count. The difference is you've got a little bit of a shimmy shammy to do. That's my word for it. That's not a technical term. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take you home. So when you go, if you if you do even count, you can go up, come back down, go up, come back down, and it all falls very nicely to where you need it to be. Um, if you if you do an odd count, the sides are different. Now I'll show you that a bit more as we go along, but I call it a shimmy shammy. Once you get used to doing it, it's easy to do. Okay, so I'm going to start off with a stopper bead, which I will incorporate because I'm quite lazy. So I don't, I don't like having an extra bead on. I will incorporate this into the, um, into the project. So we're going to start off by a stopper bead. I've put it on, then gone straight back through. It doesn't slide um, on its own, but it will move if you have to. So that's a stopper bead. Now, the other thing I want to say when I'm tapering, so if I fetch this uh, blank one here in, what happens is I'm starting well, here. So I'm actually starting on the even bit uh, where we go along and then I'll come back and taper that end, but I'll taper this end as we go. So I never start with the point and work my way up. I always decrease when I'm, t when I'm tapering uh, an odd count. It's much easier as you'll see. And there's two different ways of doing it and I'll go through both of them. So we're going to start off with these are 80 seed beads for both projects. I can't remember if I put it on my Facebook page or not. So for both projects, I've used 80 seed beads. I've used a gold for the back of this. You could use any color at the back. It would be absolutely fine. And then I've used a pink from here and a green 80 to do the earrings with. So that's all you need. Um, obviously, you're going to want a needle. Um, I'm using a fire line, a six pound fire line, um, but you can use a wildfire. Um, they're, all, they're all easy use. Because you're using gatos, you don't have to worry about it being fine. So I've got a number 10 needle and gato beads. There is one other thing I've used. Those of you who were eagle-eyed when I showed this before, on the bracelet, I've made a little um, loop of beads. Um, but you can also use a little bit of French wire. So I've got a little bit of French wire that I stick in there, which is great for attaching. It's actually better. I'm finding it better than the bead bridge. So I'm, I'm developing. We're always learning. Never stop learning. So I've started using um, that because, you, do, you know, there's no risk of it getting through. Your thread, again, can't pull through your jump ring, etc., etc. So we want nine... Uh, let me see. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I did eleven. 
okay to make it a bit wider doesn't matter one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so that's my that's my starting point um so for the peyote you start you can get cards that can help you start and um, we might still have some on the website on www.jewelrymaker.com check it out but if not hold it here but you want to keep quite a bit of tension so if you notice i wrap the thread around that first finger put my next finger on it and I've, I've sort of hooked it around and trapped it with my little finger. So, so that's quite secure. It's got quite a bit of tension. But it will slack off. And that's where your, slack, your um, stopper bead comes in. Because you can just push that back up. So we're going to add our first bead. We're missing out that first one on there. And we're going through our second bead. My finger automatically comes on there. Come down. There we go. To pull it down... Now you want these to sit like that, so they're side by side, okay? A bit like a, a, a T. So pull that down, loop your, loop your thread round again, pick your next bead, we're going to ignore the next one and then go through that next one. So you're going through every other bead and you're starting to get this um, castellation, this zigzaggy bit whoops uh, when you've got a long thread how much thread how much thread to use to to put in whatever is comfortable for you i usually use two wingspans so i'll basically hold my arms out and take take the thread from one fingertip to the other to fingertip and that's how much i normally cut off um the reason for not doing that is for what you've just seen is if you're going to bash into my bag which is sitting here and catch it so it is a very personal thing i prefer not to join in as much as i can um, to join thread so i would rather have a bigger piece of thread as i can so i'm going to hold that there pull it down do the next one in don't worry if it twists like that you can just stick it back as soon as you've got through the first row everything will become clear now this is where we have the difference between our even and our odd count if it gets loose just pull that back and you can see it all lines up so there's our little castellation you can see that but on even we would stop there so our threads coming out of the top we now want to go through every gap. So we'd automatically turn around, go in there, 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 come out of that one, and you're automatically putting a bead on. So that's great. That works really good. But we've got an odd number. We can't do that. We can't automatically turn around. We need a bead sitting here. So we're going to put our next bead on. Slide it down. So our next bead sits there, but... We can't now go, we want to be going through that bead to do the next row. So this is our little shimmy sham. So we're going to go through the bead next to it. Put them so that they're the same as the other side. So you've got that little bit of a T. Then you're going to go through the next bead and one on the next row. So we were going top row, second row. We're into the third row. We're going to pull that down. see how that's now tightening up this is now sitting the same as the other one now we're going to cross straight across and come back through this third row bead next to it okay you won't see the beads thread which is definitely not playing the game today there we go so it's come out of there we can now go through there now you don't want to go back through the bead um that's at the start of the row you need to go through the one adjacent to it okay so we've come up through here we can now come back down so we'll back down through here and we're down to the row so you come you add on this bead come round through to the foot to the next bead by it go through the one in, in the next row loop around those two go through there shing, slingshot round to that one and then back through to this one so you're doing like a, a figure of eight 
and then you come back through there and you're now in the perfect place to start adding your next row so i'm just going to get rid of this knot before i get into a a mess i've just got a little knot in the end of my thread there you go just pull it off before it becomes an issue and then we're going to go down now i always i have a habit of flipping and if you notice most of the time i bead towards me a lot of people bead away from from them it, it's personal preference some people bead up down up down don't care um when i'm doing a, a flat count even or odd i tend to turn it so that i'm always beading towards me try what and whatever feels comfy for you is the right way for you there's no right or wrong it's what's comfy for you so i'm going to now fill in all the gaps so we're going to go through the gaps there we go and you can see see it stabilizes straight away now i have quite a a um strong tension i i kind of pull it and then as i pull if you watch my little finger i've got to the end and my little finger does that and that's what pulls the tension to the last bit and then i'll i'll, I'll generally hook that around so that keeps the tension not tight it's not it's not taut but then you go through and that's keeping it and then i've automatically my little finger's gone again so now we've done four rows because remember when you put when you put um your beads on the first row is actually row one and two so the first time you do that castellation bit that's actually row three so when you're counting things that's how it happens but your first row is always run, row one and two so if you lead a pattern when you look at the first row of a pattern and the second row of a pattern in peyote let me come down here those two rows you go that bead that bead that bead that bead that bead that's how you put them on your needle you do those two up and down rows and then and then you're good to go right so we said on even county accounting you can just turn around that way just like this you turn around but on odd you can't the way you can tell is if you've got odd count you've got two beads that end and two beads this end if you had even you'd have two beads that end and one this end so that's how you can tell this is this is an odd count apart from counting the numbers obviously this is an odd count peyote so it means every time you get to this end you're going to do that shimmy shammy so we're going to do another row of ordinary so again we've just come round the top there pull it down and we've now got the three so that's working nicely okay put that out your way the reason i do that is two two one for the tension and b um, it helps keep the thread out of the way i know quite a few people find they get snags in the thread which i do too occasionally but by popping it there you're basically running the thread pulling it round your fingers so it doesn't snag when you get it in the beads so it is it is a twofold thing that and also by putting your finger on it um which isn't very good for for you seeing it because i keep putting my, my thumb on it um that's what that does right so we're now back to this end again we need to put we've got three that side we need our third this time so we're going to put our, our bead on the needle then we're going to go through the one next to it okay so we've got that there we're going to go through the next one which is between them can you see how you've got five beads there one two three four five those are the beads you shimmy shammy round and you do a figure eight so you come through there round there round there and back and then through there okay so you're not coming out through this one you're coming out through that one so it's just into that next row up this is a very odd way to do it but i'm trying to keep it there so then you can go through those two beads there coming back towards you it doesn't matter if you do them singly or together and then through the one that's next to the one you want to be going back on the next row so we're going to go through that one and then i'm going to turn it over and go back down so you do this until you have slightly less and i'll give you a good idea of how much less in just a second let me do this extra row um, and and then when you've got to the length you want we'll do the decrease it will probably take you maybe a couple of hours to do the length you want maybe three four hours depending on how quick you are um to get to the length you want once you've got to the length you want you've got that little bit there you've got that little bit there um let me have a look 
for my ruler and I can give you a good indication. Hang on, there it is. It's always got it here in my bag. I carry everything in that bag. So this is in total six and a half, but I then have to add a clasp. So we want, basically it's about half an inch each side. So if I want a seven inch bracelet, I'm going to do the length of that is about five and a half. Okay, so try it as you're doing it, try it on. You can always, once you've put that side on, if you put the clasp on it, it will give you a very good indication. It's obviously going to be um, dependent on what type of clasp it is. If it's just a little hook clasp, it doesn't matter. Um, if it's a big toggle clasp or a, a magnetic clasp, you might want to, to leave more space. So how you adjust that, because we haven't, because we've just got this flat end here, when we come to do the decrease, we can either add on more, we could take a few rows off to adjust it, to then have that decrease and, and add the clasp. So it's always adjustable. So I'm gonna show you now how to do your decrease. Okay, so we're going to pick up our first bead. Come on down, there we go. So you decrease every other, every row but you can decrease um, either at the start or the end. So if I started, depends which way, have I switched ends? No. Right, so I want to start decreasing when I've got a row with a sticky out bit, that's why it looked down, odd, on both ends. See how that's, this one sticking out further than that one? The same that side. You want to have the bead sticking out. So I'm gonna do another row so they both got sticky out. I'll, I'll, it'll become clear when I, when I do it. Don't hook around the bead mat. Okay, we're gonna add these next few beads. It grows in, in, in the atos, it grows really quite quickly. So we need to do our shimmy shammy this side to get in our correct place. If it flips like that, just move it back into place. Say, no, you're going round the corner, mate. Behave yourself go through that way then back if you want if they're all aligned you can go straight through all three of those together pull it down right so now we're here now we can decrease so we're automatically by going there that's one less than there so it automatically gives me a decrease and then when we get to the other side we've got to go through this one but how we deal with it because that is one less than that so let's get to that side so this is an automatic decrease one, two, because when you're doing odd and um, count peyote, each row will have slightly different number of beads. Three, four. So that row has four, the other row has five. Right, so I said there's two ways of, of doing this. There's a very quick, easy way, and there's a slightly longer way. Push comes to shove, my needle needs to be going through there. I don't want to bead by here. So if I want, I can do a little shimmy round here, come back through here, stop there, and then go through there. So I'm just, and don't panic about, oh, I'm not sure I follow which way you do it. All you've got to remember is whichever way you go through here, you can go all the way over here if you want. You need to end up with your needle coming through there. So that's the important bit. It doesn't matter what pattern you use, okay? That's the, that's the harder way. The easy way, and I'll show you on that bracelet, I've got one of, one of each, is to literally do that and accept that across there, you've got a, a, a thread bridge, okay? If someone's got that close, if you imagine that's on your wrist and has got down there to be able to see where that thread bridge is, it's no different than having that thread showing on the side there, and it makes it an, a lot easier. So on one of these sides, I've done the, the invisible way, shall, shall we say, so you can see there's no thread across there at all. And on the other side, if you look very closely, you'll see little thread bridges. I, I mean, it's, it's hard to see even on, so we'll try it on camera. That's how, how hard it is with... 
can you just about make that out yeah so to my mind given the amount of time it saves and hassle just by feeding it through there going straight across through there and accepting you're going to have that thread bridge there makes no difference so we'll carry on decreasing we're going to come back down through um some people really don't like um doing the odd count because the 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 easy way is to just turn it around and do it even but if you want to do a point then you've really got to go odd point so again we're just going to flip that come out of that one just go back through that one and accept that there's a little thread bridge gone over there it doesn't it really really doesn't matter now when i do go to a point if i'm doing a bracelet um i don't actually want a point point because um, and again we're going to have that thread bridge there here we go um how do i attach something to it so what i found as you saw in that bracelet we get to there so your next row would actually be one bead in there however if you put you if you whether you want a beaded um little loop or not you can put a beaded loop there if you want you can throw so backwards and forwards over there and capture a jump ring but again that's that's got the risk of it pulling through so you need about a centimeter of french wire and if you come through there you can do it with less i just actually like having a loop loop pop that french wire on then i'm going to go straight across to the other side now as that as you pull it you want that to bend rather than crease so i'm just going to encourage that to start bending pull it down and it pulls it into shape and gives you what's really a really nice tidy um, end that will take your metal it won't affect your thread i've only gone through it once but i'm not bothered because it's completely protected by by the wire the the jump ring can't pull out of it because it's too thick so it's actually a really good method of of connecting it and it was actually a viewer who put me on to using using french wire um so thank you very much it was it was a while ago now and i'm really sorry i can't remember your name um but yeah so it was a, it was a viewer who gave me that and i think that's a much better way of doing it so once you've secured that to finish your thread or if part way through the bracelet you need to um change your thread all you need to do is go change direction three times if you change direction three times you won't see the thread when you put it across directly it slips between the beads and it disappears you don't see it so when it goes there you don't see it if it went over the bead or goes up there you see it a little bit when it goes there you don't see it at all so if you go loop de loop round once you don't want to go round and round one so i then usually go di diagonally which is the normal way you do it um you'd have your thread and then do loop de loop round another one and that thread is not pulling out for anybody you can now trim that if you're doing this to add in new thread i would leave the tail so that i know which side i'm starting on especially if you get a phone call in between times then you've sort of gone oh, i've done there trimmed it off get your phone call and you're like oh which side was i on so if you leave the thread i mean we were at the middle so if you leave the thread near the top and then start you can start down here feed it through and off you go again so it just gives you that option as to how to do it so then you'd come down to the other side say how long is it have i got a long enough bracelet now yes no um and add your other side on so that's how you make your bracelet they're a great bracelet for adding anything on top of or just i mean just having them as a bracelet is lovely um but as a carrier they're a fabulous i mean it, it's it's such a rich looking um bracelet it, it, it's it's fabulous for using a lot of stuff on so let me just put those out of the way i was very generous with the amount of beads i let out so now we're going to add on the flowers is there a rhyme or reason to the way not really you want them packed enough that they're not floppy that they're going to hold but you don't want them crammed so much um that, that they're like Ugh, and really struggling 
So I did them, I did them so that if I, just gonna borrow this bracelet for a minute. So basically I did them so they were tight enough that it's not, if you look at that, it's still quite concave uh, and that way. So they're quite packed on, but when you have it around your wrist, they've got more freedom. So if you try and do it flat, you're packing it in. If you did them loose enough so they'd all line up flat, as soon as you did that, you'd end up with sort of more of that effect. You'd have gaps, which is not wrong. It's, it's fine, but it, it just depends on what you want. So I'm gonna pop that to, to the side for a minute. Um, and then I'm gonna start doing this now. So, like we said before, I, I tend to start in the middle and work my way each way. So I, I started in the middle of this and then went, right, well, I'll do that many because I didn't want it all the way round. I didn't want to have it underneath my wrist. You want to have that because if you're trying to sort of lean on that, it's not going to be very comfortable. Um, so start in the middle and work your way one way and then work your way the other way. If you want to try and split the flowers, I kind of gave up on this and, and I quite like the randomness of the floral. So I had to try and do them random. Um, this is what I've got left from doing the bracelet and earrings. Oh no, I've still got, sorry, I have still got more left. Um, but you can see I've picked out more of the, you get more of one color than another color, etc., etc. But I'll show you how to attach these. So I'm gonna start in the middle. So we're attaching thread, as I said, got my tail there, got about an inch tail, you don't need much more. Put it under my thumb, hold on to it, then I'm going to go through that one. So at the moment, if I pulled, don't get it caught. If I pulled this, it would just pull straight out. I'm gonna go back up through there. So there's, there's um, two changes of direction. That's now, a little bit secure but it's not fully secure so I'm going to go to the next row and do another loop-de-loop -loop. now if you watch this thread here I can pull and that's not going to move so I'm quite happy that's now secure I can trim off that tail out of the way okay so that bit's done these loose like flowers they're so easy to use they're beautiful to use i mean you could use them as chandeliers you could cascade them you can use them in netted pieces they're beautiful to use for this it's so easy i'm going to go from behind through the flower then i'm going to pick up a bead so i've got in the middle of each of these flowers you can see that seed bead sitting there so i'm going to i'm going to pick up a seed bead pop it down through there. Then I'm going to go back through the flower, but not the seed bead. So let me pull this. If I pull the seed bead out of the way, I'm just going back through that flower. And then when I pull that down, that's then sitting nice and pretty. You could leave it. I mean, I did originally think I would do one in the middle and then six around and then I got carried away. I loved it so much. I just kept going. So you've got one. Now you're going to got one to go through another couple of seed beads. So you don't want to do, if I did one there, it's gonna sit like that. So like I said, if I was just doing a flower with a ring around, I could do that. But because I wanted to do more, I'm gonna to have to go further away from that first one. And I think you need to be a couple of beads, either rows or columns, away so let me go through the next one so if i wanted to go all the way over here i just feed backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards rather than leaving the thread because then it stays it's it, it's invisible from behind um i i like having um my pieces tidy from the back as well as the front if i can so i'm going to pick up another one feed it down pop it through we're going through there pull it into place so you can see they start sitting beautifully together but do you see what i mean about the gapping so we're going to have to pack these so i've come out of there i'm going to come round this way there's no rhyme there's no pattern there's no reason if you think there's a bit of a gap appearing and you don't want that gap take your thread to where you're going just fetch your thread through pick up another one um feed it down 
and there you go you keep going and you can do this as much or as little as you can to add more thread in we've shown you how to do that just before so you just keep adding and what you'll find is they'll move they'll shuffle as you do it so add as many as you want in work your way down one way work your way back the other way take your needle to the back to add on more thread do your your three changes of direction and then you're good to go so that is your bracelet so I'm going to pop the bracelet to one side and then we're going to do the earring. So you'll have to give me a couple of seconds while I change the seed beads. So, so these earrings, I really quite liked the, the thought of having them as a, um, almost as a climber going up. Oh, bird of paradise, uh, Ollie. Yeah, I quite like that. Yeah. The, the colours the, the look fantastic. You get a texture, it's very 3D. Um, it's just, it's just a, 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 fantastic, a fantastic way of using, A, introducing a new stitch. So we're going to be doing twisted herringbone. So this is completely different to what you've done before. So pause and come back to it till you finish your bracelet. You know, don't get yourselves confused. Um, but it's a great technique. Now, normally, twisted herringbone. So, I, um, twisting herringbone is very traditionally done with three three different colours. Um, and I, I was going to try and do a pair of earrings, but we, we um, ran out of time. So, I thought, well, no, I'm going to do some of the twisted herringbone. But for this one, if you do it with three, it will work with the eight toes. It will work for a rope, but it's quite squidgy. So, you'd need to put something like par paracord through the middle. Um, or something to the middle just to help hold that in position. So you could actually do twisted herringbone around your paracord and, and it will hold its shape. Um, but I didn't want to, to put paracord through these earrings because they're too small, really. So I, I've taken it down to four, which is quite unusual for, for, for um, twisted herringbone. So we're going to have, we're going to start with doing a bit of uh, ladder stitch. So we're going to have two green and two pink so this is the start we're doing a two by two then we're going to put a knot in there some people go round it again I I yeah I, uh, I'm, I'm a one for knotting it so for ladder stitch we want to then come back up through there those who are watching on the third this is the same way as you start the brick stitch ones so we come out of the top of the pink we're now going to go from the bottom to the top of the pink again with the two greens on so you pull those into place and they nestle into place go back down through the greens so you can do um this for as long as you want you can make a big long list of line of this and um, once you come out of the bottom of the green you're going to pick up two pinks I think I call I call um, ladder stitch. It's a bit loop de It's a bit loop de loop. So you go round there, come out of there. You go loop de loop round there. You come up through there. You do a loop de loop round there. So you you kind of doing a consent doing a circle on each way. One one goes top to bottom and one goes bottom to top. So we're coming out through the top of that pink. Right. So there's the start. Well, this isn't very much for a tube. So we're going to bring those two together. And we're going to do a loop-de-loop. -loop. We're going to go down through that first green and then back up through that pink. Okay, so there's the start of our tube. It's a bit square, but it doesn't matter. We're going to spiral it anyway. So we're going to start our herringbone. Now, herringbone, you do two stitches, at two beads at a time. You can do double herringbone, but we'll not get into this. This is single herringbone. So we're going to go up one and down there so to keep the colors for the spiral we're going to go up a pink down a green so we're going to have a pink and a green on our needle so a pink and then a green and then we're going to go down for this first one we're going to go down through the two so this is still about stabilization at this stage now if you look they don't sit square so they're they're actually sitting i'll try and show you in that way they're, they're actually starting to angle. I don't know whether you can see that through. 
you can just about see that so it will it, it will become they don't they don't let they don't lie on top of each other so we're going to go up through the next one which is pink if you wanted to you could just do one pink spiraling through all the green and then we're going to put a pink and a green on and come back through whoops pink and green okay and then come back down through those two greens so we've now got three in each column okay we're now going to go back up through the pink and we're going to start twisting it there's loads of different ways you can twist so you can tw you can twist uh, cause it to twist uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise you can do quite a sharp twist which we're going to do quite a sharp twist you can do a shallow by that I mean um, the, co the, the coils go quite close together or you can do a very very low uh, very slow one um, so we've come out of there we're going to put our next two on always now we're going to be putting a pink and a green all the way through so we're going to go down through one green So to make this quite a steep spiral, we're going to come, we've come out of that one, we're going to come down three. So we want to be going up through the next colour of three of them. So we're going to go up through those three pinks. And what happens is that we'll pull that this way around. So, and you'll see it's starting to open. It's start, it wants to go that way because that wants to come down to there. Okay, so we now put our pink and our green on. So we go into the top green and you'll notice you have a, you have a, a bit of a split that's absolutely proper. Then we want to go one, two, three down, up through those three. So we're not going through the bottom one, we're just going through the next three and twist. You can see you're starting to get a slight twist and because it's only two, it's very quick to, to, to show you that twist. So pink and green down through one green and pull you can really because it's quite a severe twist you can really see that starting to to turn over so these up up through the three so that's a, a complete circuit so these are um you're always going to get this gap between the two if it was three you'd kind of had three three separate things which you can open like petals because you're putting this bridge down here, but that one had a bridge there, that one have a bridge there, that one will be connected here. So they do connect, but they just lag a bit because you're doing the twisted. If you were doing straight, then it would, it would be closer than that. So we're gonna do a few more of these. So you want the two colors and then through. It's a very therapeutic, you can do, um, again, it's, it's, it's a, a rope that can go quite quickly especially if you do just the two, you can do a fab fabulous um, rope necklace like this. And I don't think I've done a, a necklace um, on screen for the two before, but it's a, it's a lovely way to do it. And you'll, you'll, once we've gone a little bit further, you'll see, you can already see that that's starting to spiral. Um, so, and, and it's also, because, because down here now has all got bridges over, they're all connected, it's actually firmer to hold and it's 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 quite nice to hold shall we say so we're going to go back up there so we we want to do a decent length of this come on up you come there we go uh, okay give that a bit of a pull so i'm just going to carry on doing this pattern wise if you wanted to do you could do all this this all green that would work and just have the cat color of the flowers on top. That would look quite nice. You could do it, like I say, you could have one pink and then um, the other three green um, and keep going. So there are different ways you can do this. If they don't fall right, so those two are actually sitting parallel, you want them to, to fall apart at the top. So you that pink's not sitting right. Just pull it up a bit. Thank you very much. They now fall over and, and, and open up. So it's, it's, it's keep an eye on as you go through. What you'll find is you won't be able to automatically go through through that one um, if it hasn't, let, let's call it opened properly. So what you do in that case 
um, is you'd go, if that one was kind of a bit like that, so it, it's flat, is you come up through your needle and you need to sort of just manipulate it to go on the needle and then it pulls it into, into position. Um, you can ombre this if you want, so you can change the colours going up, you can change the colours um, going around, like I say you could do it self-coloured. Um, I would suggest when you first start, the two colours give you a very quick visualisation and it's very easy to see what you're doing, where, where it is and where you're going. Um, so do um, do try it with them. So you can see there we've nearly gone all the way round with our spiral. So we're going to carry on going through. One, two. I'll do a little bit more of this and then what we'll do, so these will be shorter, but it, it's, it's only to show you um, to demo it. There we go. We'll do another couple of rows and then we'll have enough to um, attach to. So we're going to pull that through there. And because there's only two, I'm kind of, you're not stepping up. So normally you'd have a step up, but we, this is just a continuous spiral and it works really well. It, it, it's so quick, like I say, to, to, to grow. Come here, if you can get your needles, uh, your beads to go on the needle. So we're going to stop there. Right, so we've got our little spiral. It, it, you know, it, it's only a centimetre, centimetre and a half. It, it doesn't matter compared to the others. We're then going to take them. I, I don't like this for, what, for, the, for the purpose of the earrings. If you have three, like I said, you could open it up and pop one of the lucites in, in, in the centre if you wanted. That would work beautifully. But because there's only two, it looks a bit odd. So I want to fasten these together. So instead of coming down the three... I'm just going to go through the two. So I'm going to go around through the two, filling in those bridges and come down to there. All you're doing is, is, is forming that connection where they didn't have one. So I'm going around all the top two. I missed the top one. Go in there. So now they've come in a lot closer. And then I'm going to go around again in just the top one. And that is now completely sealed off the end of that of that rope. That is now, that's now secured. So we're going to pop our lucite on the end. So we're going to have this beautiful bright blue one. Go through it as before. Now this time I did go and get some gold because I think I, I really like the gold against the colours. So I'm going to carry on with that you could use a green you could pick out you could do so a blue for the blue one a, a pink for a pink one a green for a green one if you wanted but I, I really quite like that flash of gold so as before pop your bead go through the bottom of it pop your your um gold on feed back through and pull it tight now you've come out of one side, so that would be lopsided. So go through the diagonal bead, and then in the, I mean they're quite cute in them uh, of themselves. They they really they really are quite cute. So when you've done that, I'm now going to start going up, and I decided to literally just go up one line. You could go up the two; it would fit. You'd just have a complete column of flower. Um, but I liked the idea of having. Um, the flower almost vining up, trailing up, um, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, you could do this. Oh, you could do this on the spine of a dragon. That would look amazing. You could have a floral dragon. Come on, unspin yourself. Thank you. So I'm going to go back through there. Pull it through. Now. So I've gone, missed the first one. I've come out of the first one. But from now on, I'm going through every other. Which just gives you enough. Oh, see that? I've got my thread there caught. Make sure it doesn't catch on a petal. Pull it down because you will see it. Nobody else might, but I, I would see it on mine. So I'm going to go back through the same one and through the next one to it. So I'm going through two at a time pulling that through 
and like I say you can you could ombre them um, if you started however you started you can ombre them slide it down through the flower you come out of that one go through the next two so it works all the way along make sure you don't catch your flower and pull it so it's not massively tight on here they'll they'll sag next to each other they don't they're not rammed ramrod straight and they've just got a little bit of loose but they fill in they fill in the spiral this would also work beautifully on um if you've got a what's it called you know like a fairy for the top of the tree or something like that you could do this there and have this have these running as as lines going up um the fairy skirt they'd look beautiful like that you can decorate them like that and um, we're going to pull through that one and then we're going to go up through the next one okay pulling it through so you'd carry on all the way up i've got i'll do two more on this one you you i mean you can by all means make these um smaller tell you what else you can do with them is 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 have lots of them they're gonna they're gonna be a bit like um a wisteria um plant if you if you did a lot of these as a necklace and had them all hanging down and i'll get the earrings over in a minute and have a look at that um i think you could get sort of that wisteria um effect um pull through that one back up through there so when we're virtually at the top now and i'm i'm, I'm at a an odd number so i'll not add an extra one in that's my tail from the top okay so once you've gone round you can see that spirals round if i'm, I'm going to just grab one of the earrings oops dropsy so you can see because you're doing it every other if you wanted them to be more you could do you could double it up and you'd actually get more of that sort of effect with the flowers going up if you put them on every single um space rather than every other it would it would pack them in a lot closer so you could do that if you wanted them more like that you would still see this line running through it the spiral running through it which i think is quite nice the other thing you could do is actually go up the other pink one as well and that would add extra so you could actually do one color going up one take all the sort of pinks and red tones going up one and the sort of blue, more bluey and green tones going up the other and that would look sensational now for this one because because i didn't have any while i was doing it i've done this thread bridge uh, this um bead bridge but as you can see my shepherd hook is directly onto that thread so i am going to practice what i preached i'm going to put one more on the top here um and i'm going to actually use another little bit of french wire because i think it's a much more secure way of attaching so let's pop that through there and then we're going to go up through that last one come on don't get caught All right now because i'm back to where i started i've got my tail i can actually knot these together because you're not going to see them and that will firm that whole thing up so those are now um firm, but there's still there's still going to be movement in the flowers they're not ever going to not move so that's a bit more firm we'll be able to thread that one through somewhere come here there we go to finish and then i want a loop so i'm going to get another bit of my french wire where did i put my needle there he is feed that on and again i want it to curve down so i've come out of a pink one eh, tied a knot i'm going to go down through that green if you want that to curve rather than to bend get a pair of round nose pliers this goes for wherever you're using french wire if you want that curve if you get your round nose pliers come here pop your pop your pliers in there and just bend it around so what happens is you get a much more even rather than a sharp bend you can pull that down 
and that now fixes so you can put your shepherd hook through there so we're going to go loop de loop around here again i've come down the bottom i'm going to go back up and again because of that french wire i'm not worried come on there we go now i pulled it tight it was very tight so i'm going to pull that back up if this was a, a thread if this was a seed bead one i would go around that a couple of times but because i've got the french wire around it i'm quite happy that that's secure the rest of the the rest of the piece has only got one single thread through it so it's as much likely to break anywhere else as there so i can double knot that then take your needle i never cut directly on a knot I'm going to feed that down. The reason being, hang on, let me just feed that needle through there. The reason I don't cut on a knot is, if you've got a knot, uh, let me see if I've got any of the cord I had earlier. Just bear with a minute. I'm sure I've got some in here. Ah! No. If, if I, right, so there we go, that'll do. If you tie a knot, that's got a nice knot there. If you cut it directly, really close up to that, the chances are these will unravel. If you leave a little bit on, they'd have to pull all these through to unravel, and it's not likely to. So if you cut it directly, there's only the bit in the knot that's got to slip out, and then you've lost your knot. So that's why I, I will always feed through so if you can imagine you've got some beads on there because I don't want the thread hanging out. So I'd go through at least one bead and then I've got that much tail distance from my knot. And your knot is that much more secure because you haven't, um, you haven't cut it too close. So we can now snip off here. And the same with this one. Oh, this is something you should never ever do on live TV thread a needle In, uh, invariably i can do it first time at home there you go second time that's not bad and again feed through a couple of times pull it down i don't have to worry about going backwards and forwards because i've already um knotted it so i know it's secure so i can now trim off the end know that's completely secure add my shepherd hook to my loop and that's a, a, a little version of your earring as against a big one and like i say if you've got um something with a skirt on it if if you've got um a fairy you've made or anything like that you could use these to to sort of cascade down and they're going to look sensational so have fun making your earrings have fun making your bracelet um don't forget send in what you make to the wall of fame i've noticed a few a few well quite a few of our makes coming through when i was on the third someone had sent something they'd made from claire show on the on the first so we do we do look at them and we do really appreciate it send your makes through to studio at jewelrymaker.com um if you want to buy any of the seed beads or anything like that needles and thread have a look on our website which is www.jewelrymaker.co.com uh, sorry jewelrymaker.com. Remember to have a really happy Christmas.